Hello guys, hope you're doing well. Guys, tuko hapa wa pack delicacies na tumepatana na mheshimiwa Amos from Starehe. Nikamwacha tupige story kidogo, atuongeleshe tu kidogo. Anyway, mhesh, uko aje? Ah, uh, oh, niko poa. Uh -huh. I'm doing fine. Uh -huh. Nime, nimekuja wa pack kidogo kupiga lunch. Uh -huh. African traditional foods. Uh -huh. Yondo kitu yangu. Uh -huh. Yeah. Wow, anyway Mhesh, tukiangalia umekuwa ukipiga kazi vizuri sana pale Stare. Congratulations to that. Uh, but nimeona ukikuwa ukiongelelea sana sana issue ya dump site. Watu kutupa obvious takataka. Hebu tuambie hii story unapangaje? Okay, eh, kumekuwa na issue ya dump, dumping sana. Especially hapa Nairobi hapa Stare. Unajua population ya Stare iko so high. So tuko na challenge ya dumping. Even though hiyo ina fall under the prerogative ya yeah, the governor story ya kuokota takataka na kupeleka dandoro dam set and what tunataka kuja na sustainable solution ya kujua venye na address history ya dumping cuz iko na effect kubwa sana kwa climate yetu mambo ya pollution of which na affect the local community wenye wanaka karibu unaweza unofficial dam sites so we need to come up with a system yenye itakuwa ina kota hizi takataka once and for all yenye itakuwa na sustainable solution and me my view ilikuwa ni ku involve the local community hii kazi kwa sababu tumejaribu employment tumeandika watu wengi sana imeshindikana why don't we this time round the county government incorporate ile baa vijana ama vijana wako kwa mtaa wakapatiwa kazi ya kuchukua gundu inaweza kuwa rahisi sana na inaweza kuwa very effective because sawa ndo watu wenye wanajua mtaani au ndo wanajua by the time tataka me pile up na nini na nini but we expect that communication takuwa na people kwa county county na mambo mengi sana But if you involve the local people when you are going to come to, I think it is a sustainable solution. Now, Peter, we make create an employ, make create employment. How much do you know? It will mature. It will metamorphosize into something. And you have to come up with ways to recycle. You have to cut down. You have to recycle. You have to organic. You have to recycle. You have to come up with. But my position still holds. We really need to involve the Jana. Kwa hiyo story yote. Eh, ndo tu address hiyo story ya dumping once and for all. Sure. Uh, Kulikuwa na ishu ya kujengwa kwa soko. Uh, soko zijengwa watu wacha kuzianga everywhere. Uh, Ii ishu mefikia wapi tangu sasa? Eh, in the president's manifesto wakiongelea mambo ya Nairobi. Ali promise ata jenga more than 20 markets in Nairobi. So, starehe being the nerve center of Nairobi city. Na given kila mtu toka mtaa, toka the rural areas wanakuja kuhasul Hapa Nairobi, actually 90% watu wamekuja pale ni hustlers Venya lingia na yu narrative ya bottom up na hustlers Tuna expect at party ye, priority hapa starehe Ili tuweze kwa accommodate mayudhu wengi ya wana job Tuwa jenge different markets We, 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 we identify land, akuja to finance, to get the land from the county Na tuweza kubuild markets kwa sababu The population na increase in Nairobi. The situation ni kiangalia kwa streets hawkers wana increase. But, atujakuwa na functional markets. Zenzi na jengwa kukabio rise up your population. So, it is all, it's, it's only logical that as more people come to hustle in Nairobi, tunanza kudengeza soko. Ili ule mtu mwenye alikuwa hawker last year, after one time, one year, kitu wanapata castol kwa hiyo soko. Kuna pona progress kwa productive life yake ya kibiashara. But tunapata sai kuna mtu ameka kwa street 15 years because hajakuwa na any new markets that are built. So we need to have practical solutions. Tujue kuna watu wengi sana wanaingia hii Nairobi na na need to increase the market space. Pale watu wanafanyia kazi. The business space should be expanding, not contracting because the issue yenye tuko nayo starehe unapata hadi zile soko tuko nazo. Watu wanajaribu kuzi grab. Unashindwa watu wataenda wapi finally? Kwa zata zile markets kwa available, unapata kuna watu wakona interested parties. Kuna zingine pia unapata kwa county. Tunajaribu kusema soko zikuwe gazeted in an open way. That watu wajue this is a marketplace. That will cab ill and grabbing enye kwa Nairobi. So those are, hizo ndo yale mambo enye nataka kufollow up na kufuatilia kwa speed. Tumekuwa na challenges watu nafikiria mambo ya kuchange leadership ya masoko. That is not a priority as of now. Priority ni kusekuwe hizo soko kwanza. Because watu naanza migogoro ya kufaitia. Sijuwe nyo watapanga hookers in town. That is not a priority. Kitu nyo nataka kujua kwanza ni venye nyo nataka permanency ya watu. How we going to solve their, prob their problem in the long run. Because ukitaleta solution moja, after one year upate, 
iko out of place maybe maybe mese mutapatia hokas a street wafanye kazi but after any utapata even has come to Nairobi it's a hoka now then what do you do they are no atuongezi barabara si ndio so basically i think to care address where you your market vizuri they accommodate so many people is it a discussion is anzishwa ama bado it was a campaign promise but you know as parliament our work ni ku oversight na ku make sure tuna follow through ile manifesto president alingia nayo tunamsisiza lazima perform on what he promise the people because you make the people pregnant with hope you make the people pregnant with hope you have to perform you have to give them what to promise them because that's all about the campaign period ni kuambia tu your manifesto so i think we shall see how it turns out but i think the president akona good will akutengeneza soko ye mwenyewe asha sema ye ni hasla akona hasla at heart na ndo sisi na ndo hasla swengo amemchagua so it's only fair that he addresses their issues na since sisi ni elected leaders in Nairobi we expect him to incorporate our, our advice ama what we know our know how on how to go about these issues thank you Mheshimiwa kuna hizi juzi tulikuwa na ulikuwa na, na, na rais mlikuwa umetembea na yeye e, wewe mheshimiwa Jalango na wengine kama wabunge wa Nairobi mnapanga aje kufanya kazi na serikali ya Kenya kwanza e, ile tulikuwa kule nini oh kule kulikuwa na hiyo Komarok uh, pale Mukuru e, Mukuru mm, Mukuru pali the, the, the president alikuwa na launch housing project is actually administratively costarehe kwa hivyo ina follow under my dcc but the constituency ina follow under nairobi south but since it's a neighboring constituency na kulikuwa na project ya housing ambao they, they, they are promising to build over 13000 units zenye wanafanya kwa hiyo program ya slum upgrade i had to be there niende nisikize hii maneno kwa sababu pia mimi na challenge ya kwangu ambako kuna a lot of population yenye naishikwa slum area nilikuwa nimeenda kusikiza the way the president is planning na nikasikia you know as much as we are not the same team he is the president of the day and i have to listen to him and pull ile kitu yenye itafanya kwangu kuwe developed i have an interest to serve the people njia yote yenye ndapata watu wangu wasaidike mimi nitapitia so lazima ningeenda pale nisikize hiyo mpango yake kwa sababu tumekuwa na issue kubwa sana ya hii mambo ya slum upgrade wewe unajua mambo kama ile iko na ya Kibra mtaani hapa Ngara pangani unapata watu wamechujwa wanaambia wanajengwa nyumba fiti nyumba kisha jengwa zinauzwa sonywa kona do so unapata mtu wa mtaa amefukuzwa pale ametoka atapata hiyo location so the goal the noble cause ya kusema uno of affordable housing inako imepotea kwa sababu mtu alienda kuofia mpatie hiyo noble housing si ana benefit finally so it's a situation yenye mimi niko nataka kukaa chini na the relevant authorities we have a sit down tuongele the stakeholders like i said even if we really can't encourage the, the, the mushrooming of slums we have to understand the champions of affordable housing are the real landlords and land ladies wenye wamejenga watu structures kwa ghetto cuz at least they were share at the first initiative ya ku provide solution ya housing kwanza so the moment una come kufanya hii affordable housing you should have those people on the table kwanza because they are stakeholders huyo mtu amekuwa anachukua rent hapo ukishajenga ukisha muondo hapo jengezi nyumba kubwa adenda wapi eh huyo mtu amekuwa anga livelihood yake yote anategemeza shanties ndio uko na unataka ndio ku deal na the tenant but how about the landlord ama the landlady pia ni mkazi hapa si ndio tusifanye siasa ya kuongelea mama mboga pekee tuongelee pia mwenye mboga you know <laughs> Unaweza jali masile ya mama mboga sana usahau mwenye mboga pia si kweli kwa sababu sasa watu wamekuwa wameofa hiyo affordable housing for a very long time and it is only fair they are incorporated in the whole thing wajue the way they are supposed to be compensated in a better way the way their lives to continue and so on and so forth the other thing about your affordable housing pia it has to be logical wewe ambia mtu wa ghetto akuja nyumba alikuwa analipa maybe thao akamzanza kulipa hiyo nyumba za utano. Hiyo ni hiyo ni kumwambia tu ahamie ogeto ende kitu kingine. So hakuna hakuna <laughs> for the bossing unafanya. Actually wewe ni, ni mboka tu na pigo ya kuzia watu wengine hiyo story hizo manyumba tu. Ni kuweva kiotu wasee ukamweke project zako. So you know, it's something that needs to be thought through. 
we are very lady kukua guy any time na engage na government of the day on issues that is going on issues that are going to improve the the, the livelihoods of our people and that is why tulikuwa na hiyo meeting anything yenye natacho na mwananchi tutakuwa na we are ready to work with the government of the day kama ni kitu ya interest watu wetu Another thing uh, when MP mwenye wendo MP wa CBD Nairobi CBD sure. tumeona kuna hii issue ya boda boda eh, sijui umepangaje kuwa kuna watu wa boda boda which are a very big uh, part of your constituents wale walikufikia kwa mm. Okay kumekuwa na hii issue ya boda boda mimi kama MP wa hapa Nairobi City starehe yenyewe that's an issue but it is time now we come to the realization that the boda boda sector has become a very major driver of the economy of Nairobi with these traffic jams, easy biashara zote zimeingia, the online business, kila mtu anategemea deliveries. Na ni watu wa bodando tunategemea. So wamekuwa na run economy yetu in a major way. And it is time now, we incorporate them kwa hii transport system yetu ya county. Wakuwe mepatua stages ama wajua kuna kukua na management system. Enye itakuwa legit, sustainable, na itafa, watafanya kazi na amani. Kwa sabu, sooner or later, utapatata kama if you've been to Kampala boda boda na kwa wame wana move the masses pale kwa ile town na Nairobi tunaelekea hapo and the best thing about it kwa sababu they are faster so they run they run they run factors of the economy in a very fast way so akuna venye unaweza sema we can do away with them it's only that we adopt them in a more legit way na tuwakubali kama ni stages wa loketwe kama ni sheds ifanywe kitu very professional no, no, the first initiative by the past government ilikuwa kuambiwa register into circles so that they can become manageable. And I think most of them have complied. So we just move to the next level of formalizing their sector. We make it like a formal sector. Kama venya matatu kona representative mali, pia wakona representative mali. In case of anything, we we'll last with them and have our stakeholders meeting with them so that we can have efficient working relationship. Another issue, issue ya hoka. Pia hokas in the, in the city of Nairobi, tumiona election nyo na jaziliisha. E, Sijii city county ni kama imeanda kuwa songesha, songesha wengine. We kama mtu na wangelelea, what can you say? What can you say? Uh, I understand there's a plan in place by the county government on the management of hokas. They are proposing so many things like uh, relocating them to Kwazizi Chochoro, uh, creating uh, open spaces kwa Saidia, which we, we welcome that. We welcome that. But everything needs a management system. Lazima I manage your vizuri. As much as we want the city to be orderly, we have to mind. We have to know that the entry point into the business, into the business chain, in a kwangani through hawking. Mutu kuja na kuahoka kwanza. Anena na kwa venda, sindio? Aktoka kwa venda na kwa castolona. Anena na on shop. And I'm a wholesaler and I'm a importer and then I'm a business module. So you have to reduce harassment for your pressure point and you're hawking. The entry point should not be if I go bureaucratic, if I go on a mambo mingi, we want to have a freedom of any case in another way, no is a quinuka. That's the way you can address this your tenure. Me want to have some unemployment, poverty, and any. The issue yet kona na poverty na pataka entry point yao tena ya mtu ya bukuingi ya tawe sayu kujaribu kwa maindi hapa utapata kanjo na polisi ni wewe eh na group zingine pia na kamku kwa butain kila wakati uwezi penya so card na reduce your pressure kwa entry points uh, the business chain we can have very many young men who are able to employ themselves and come up with new ideas people who can be solution givers people who offer solutions to this this menace of unemployment. So, lastly, Mwesh, eh, watu wengi wana kuita giant killer. Uli, uli toa sitting MP, na uwe sitting MP, alikuwa metuwa sitting MP, previous eh, former current. Watu wana juuliza, secret ilikuwa nini? Uli manejaje kupigawa watu chini? Na uli run campaign moja solid. Eh, okay, kila kitu ni strategy. For your information, mimi, I'm a political scientist. I graduated from the University of Nairobi with a degree in political science. So, uh, kila kitu ni research, unevaluate your own enemy, you do your sort analysis, you establish their strengths, their weaknesses, you find opportunities and any threats they may, they may pose. So once I did a very good survey and I did a good research on my opponent, to get a ground, I knew how to talk to the people. 
Then again, siasa pia 99% ni God. Kwa so, sababu God ndo kupatizo strategy zote. Then ikakuwa na timu moja hatari sana. Campaign team yangu ilikuwa imevolve kila mtu. So my strategies were right. Then me am born and bred up in Stare. Mimi ni kijana wa mtaa wa Ziwani. So watu wote wamekuwa kama MP tumekuwa gal kufanya nao kazi. Mzee Maina Kamanda ameni mentor siasa miaka mingi. Bishop Margaret Wanjiro ni watu wamekuwa. So mimi nishajuaga weaknesses zao na strengths zao. So when I went to the ground I reduce on their weaknesses I emphasize on their strengths. But then it has been a good campaign we thank God for the results. It has also been me prove vitu mingi sana. Watu mtaani wako very happy wanasema eh hey, kama mume make kijana amelelewa hapa mtaani hapa imepatia watoto wengi hope na imepatia watu wengi hope sana. And I really wanted to inspire my community especially kuonesha sisi lazima tutawaliwe na na mabombe. Eh pia sisi tunaweza kuwa na nini yetu. Yeah. One month in parliament. Leo ni leo ni 13th one month in parliament. Mulikuwa so in 8 the one month in parliament already ni challenges gani umeface huko tumeona ule mp wa mumia sis peter salasi alisema eh, ma, ma ole ma ranking members wanawabuli wewe ume, ume experience nini huko ama imekuwa smooth okay sije experience sije experience much challenges as such it's only that uh, airtime inakuwa kidogo na obviously we understand that lazima wa fever the senior members but but i think they will give us equal <laughs> airtime because of pia sisi tumekuja ku inject fresh ideas tumekuja kuwaletea fresh ideas kwa hiyo bunge to address zile issue aje address kwa sababu kama sasa hivi we have a new economic dispensation here a bottom up approach aje tumika anytime else kwa dunia so pia wamekuwa kwa hiyo wengine ya trickle down wanafa pia si watu sikize ideas zetu sasa hizi economies are being run on the phone everything iko kwa internet hata hii channel yako na join online. Si ndio you don't have a physical office man. So if we were to digitize fully all functions of government because that is why we come in. We digit tujaribu kuonesha the importance ya ku move with the times. Says it kwa 5G, safari kwa 5G. Pia government na faku reflect hiyo. Na 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 story kama yenye ni very critical in this country. The issue of financial technology fintech. There are no laws that support story of fintech kwa bunge. Sasa unasikia mtu hata akisikamgava hata pesa ngapi na fintech. Hakuna anga kesi kwa sababu kuna zile sheria. Sasa hizi ukibuliwa hata online. This hakuna zile sheria zinakabio hiyo because that's an area that you've not addressed and that will be is going to be a game changer kwa sababu inakata cross all industries. Kama sasa hapa tuko na ifs ndio? If kabla tukano physically na mtu hata ajai tukano lakini online anatukwa no kila siku lakini unafanya nini nothing unas kwa sababu kuna zile sheria zimekwa zile safeguard everything hauna lawyer mwenye understand anything about technology hauna engineer hata ama daktari hakuna mtu ana understand venye anaweza incorporate hiyo knowledge yake ikuwe ni kitu iko kwa hapo uni ni kwenda course okay we need we need we need we need to overhaul the whole systems and try to make laws that incorporate ICT in every other sector so I think kuna faku patia time pia tu to contribute to ambie to ambie ndio Shukran sana mheshimiwa all the best man Sa, Santi, ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Santi, all the best pia ah, yeah. for your company pia grow Santi. Ah to my people at Starehe I like to thank you so much for voting me in in large numbers Eh nawashukuru sana kwa kunipatia hii chance niwapigie job na mimi nishaanza job na tupige hii tarehe tuipange venye tu tuipange tu hii tarehe kivyetu venye tunafanya kazi to make sure tumefight ya space za soko nini watu wapate freedom ya kufanya kazi majo pia ndo tunazitoka kwa processor kuitafuta we deliver on our promise tukienda mbele sawa asante sana